My name's Mark Ford. Um, I'm the chairman of uh, the uh, uh, owner participants in the Stronger Christchurch Infrastructure Recovery Team, which is quite a mouthful. It's called SKIRT. Uh, it's also called the Alliance. Um, before uh, I turn it over to our distinguished uh, um, funders, I think, they're very distinguished when they pay the bills, um, the, the, the minister and his worship. I'd like to give you a little bit of a background first. As you're aware, the earthquakes caused major damage to uh, Christchurch roads and underground services, and Skirt's task is to rebuild the public, publicly owned horizontal infrastructure damaged in those earthquakes. Today we're very pleased to announce uh, how that horizontal infrastructure is going to be rebuilt, uh, how, it will be uh, how we're going to tackle that. Infrastructure includes roads, fresh water, wastewater, stormwater networks, and other infrastructure like bridges and retaining walls. Rebuilding this infrastructure is a huge task and is likely to cost more than $2 billion and take several years to complete. Christchurch leading advocates, uh, the Honorable Jerry Brownlee and, and His Worship, the Mayor of Christchurch, uh, Mayor Bob Parker, uh, will launch this in a moment. Um, but beforehand, I'd just like to, to explain a little bit more about SKIRT. SKIRT is made up of people from many organizations. The head contractual agreement within the SKIRT is an alliance between the owner participants, which is the Christchurch City Council, Sarah, and the New Zealand Transport Agency, and the non-owner participants, Christchurch-based companies um, support it, but they are Citicare, Downer, Fletcher's, Fulton Hogan, and McConnell Dow. They're some of New Zealand's leading companies uh, addressing this, uh, this problem. There are many consultants and suppliers and contractors based in, in uh, Christchurch supporting it, and that, that's fantastic, uh, the way everybody's working behind to make this a success. The skirt delivery teams from Citicare, Downer, Fletcher, Fulton Hogan and McConnell Dow have been actively rebuilding uh, the city since immediately after the first earthquake just over two years ago. By the end of the year, Skirt will have uh, a peak monthly spend of about $40 million a month. On the ground, this means uh, having up to 150 work sites operating around the city at any one time. So far, over 450 projects are underway and over a billion dollars of funding has been committed um, uh, to, to this rebuild. Uh, I think I can speak on behalf of uh, SKIRT. We'll do everything to minimize your inconvenience, uh, but believe it or not, roadworks and other disruptions means progress. Uh, it's a positive sign. But let me, uh, let me turn it over to uh, His Worship. I think you're going to speak next, and, and they will uh, talk about the program, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Your Worship. Thank you. Well, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, also uh, want to acknowledge my uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Amy Adams, and uh, my wife, Joanna. Don't acknowledge Joe, I'll be in serious trouble later on. And uh, all of those uh, assembled folk from the media, I see Roger over the back here, and uh, welcome, everybody. It's good to have you here. I mean, this is actually a really important day, and I'll explain why in a second, but uh, a lot of people think that uh, there's nothing very sexy about water pipes and sewer pipes and roads, and I suppose in one degree, in one sense, that's absolutely right. Um, but when you don't have them, they then become actually the most important things in your life. And I remember after the 
both really the 4th of uh, September 2010 and the 22nd of February in 2011, just how essential it was for us to get all of those services back to homes as quickly as we could. The water, uh, well, I think we got the water out incredibly quickly. Obviously, it's much more complex uh, around wastewater and none of us ever really want to ever have to go back to the days of the 45,000 chemical loos and the thousands of uh, portable toilets that were put around the city. But it does serve to remind us really how sexy infrastructure really is. It is the hidden value to community. And what we really have in our room today are some of the uh, finest experts when it comes to putting that infrastructure back in the ground. And that's what we're all about today. Uh, we actually signed, I think, Minister, well actually we didn't sign it, we were cunning enough to get our officials to sign it, as I recall, the uh, biggest uh, contract for horizontal infrastructure that had ever been let uh, in the history of the country. It was something like $2.2 billion that we uh, put in place back in November, I think, of last year. And Mark's already talked about the fact that we're now committed to close to a billion dollars worth of contracts that fall out of that. We've actually completed uh, already 87 contracts and the value for those is up towards around about uh, $100 million. So that's work that's already been done. But the scale of what is in front of us is absolutely unprecedented. And of course it's going to result also in an absolutely unprecedented scale of disruption at a local level. And one of the most important parts of the work that's going to be rolled out in front of you today is to give our community a clear understanding of the broad timelines for the areas in the city uh, and when the infrastructure rebuild rolls into those areas and below that there is a lot of more detailed information uh, around actual projects in your area and where they will be. But to give you a feeling for the scale of that, we've actually got to build the equivalent of a thousand kilometres of roads. So if you wanted to work that out in terms of our nation, I suppose it's like building a highway from one end of the South Island to the other, and just for good measure, putting on a bit of road that'll take you up to Taupo at the other end. In terms of our main sewers and our main water mains, those are the really big grunty pipes. We're probably talking about 400 k's of sewer mains and well over 100 kilometres of water mains, and then there are many other things that go with that, like the sort of stuff that's happening out here, major pumping stations. So it is an extraordinary, unprecedented project in the history of New Zealand, essentially rebuilding 50% of a city's underground infrastructure. And what we are going to do is to work very closely with communities as we move into your areas. So we really want to have a good dialogue. We know there is going to be uh, disruption and it's going to be essential for us as a city to actually rediscover I suppose or strengthen that spirit that we all shared particularly in the early months following these terrible uh, seismic events we need to have a level of understanding around the need for these organizations to be working in our streets and that means disruption at times to traffic and a bit of noise in your area from time to time but if we have a good dialogue both between business and residents, and we ask our people to respect the workers and the teams that will be out there in the streets. They are more than anybody else at this moment rebuilding the very vital veins and arteries of this city that actually give us life. So it's for the benefit of our communities and uh, the information that the Minister is going to talk about in a second, I believe, was the beginning of us actually now being able to put timetables, details of projects in front of you so that you will have an understanding of where and when we're going to be in your place. So to all the uh, members of SKIRT, I think it's an absolutely brilliant uh, way of going about this sort of massive project. If you had asked contractors to come in and tender for this work, any contractor who even wanted to survive through such a process would have had to build in a scale of contingency that would have made the $2.2 billion round figure contract look tiny by comparison. And the reason for that is that we don't know exactly what we find until we lift the road surfaces. So the alliance process that had come out of, actually council had used this approach before, 
was a way to bring together major contractors, put them on an even playing field, reward productivity and get best value for our ratepayers but also for central government, for the taxpayers of New Zealand. And on that note, I would like to uh, welcome the Minister for Earthquake Recovery, the man who never gets any sleep, Mr Jerry Brownlee. Welcome along, <laughs> Minister. Well, after two speeches like that, you'd think there's not much left to say, and that's probably right. I just want to acknowledge the Mayor, uh, Mark Ford, for his role as the Chair, Nairi, uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Mayor S. Joe, uh, and uh, my Associate Minister, uh, Amy Adams, as well as the many of you who are here, including Roger and all of the team from uh, Sarah, and the many of the rest of you who are actually involved in the project. And the reason why we've sort of had this little unveiling of the plan today that you see here, and Bob and I are going to take the curtain off the plan that you can see in front of us in a few minutes, um, <laughs> somewhat symbolically it would appear, Bob, um, uh, is because it is a big deal and it is a massive step forward for Christchurch. Last week uh, I gave a speech and I spoke about some of the things that we have actually achieved over the last two years. You know, the whole of the, the land zoning and the provision of temporary accommodation, the very big demolition project program that's going on in the central city and throughout the suburbs, uh, the 2,100 uh, or 21,500 houses that have been repaired through the uh, Fletcher Home Repair Program, uh, with a, another probably five or six thousand currently uh, in train, and that whole program uh, scheduled to peak about the same time as the skirt program. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about insurance and we get worried about the, the, the issues there. One thing I would say is that the insurance companies have stuck with the city through two years of seismic activity, renewing policies as they came up, and I think we, we sometimes uh, fail to recognise that that's a significant risk that they have decided to stick with. Uh, but, you know, just one company, Southern Response, 96% of their assessments now completed. Uh, and. Uh, uh, program in place for about 72% of their customers. So that, I think, will replicate among the other companies fairly quickly. We've had the uh, extraordinarily supportive response to the CBD plan, uh, and uh, the uh, Sarah and the Council are now working on how that uh, gets delivered, and you'll hear more about uh, some rollouts of that uh, toward the end of the year. Last uh, uh, Earlier this week, in fact, we announced the very big plan for the redevelopment of the Christchurch Hospital, uh, New Zealand's biggest ever hospital spend. Uh, and uh, we will also, by the end of the year, have the specifics of that plan agreed with the DHB. We want huge clinical input into uh, the type of facilities that are created there, and uh, that process is uh, ongoing. So today's horizontal infrastructure rollout comes after uh, some months uh, of considering how things should be done, but also after a great deal of work has gone into getting to a point where you can have a good plan. I want to uh, pay a particular tribute to the late Bill Perry from Fulton Hogan. Uh, he came to see me literally two days after the February 22nd event and um, proposed the alliancing structure at that point. And I uh, had not even begun to consider at that point just how big the problem was, uh, but clearly with his expertise he had scoped it out uh, and even had the sort of uh, end point numbers that we're probably going to end up seeing spent on this. And uh, Bill connected up with um, Colin Crampton, uh, Dave Brash and a few others from uh, New Zealand Transport Agency, along with Kevin Locke at the Christchurch City Council. And I don't know all of the background stuff, guys, but what you've come up with is an extremely good uh, proposal, and we were delighted to receive that uh, at uh, a cabinet level. <coughs> Uh, and to have the collaboration so clearly uh, organised between the two parties, the two main clients, the Government of New Zealand and the Christchurch City Council, uh, is extremely pleasing. So we, uh, as Bob said, sometimes forget what it's like when you can't flush a toilet, when you can't empty a, a sink or you can't turn on the tap and get that fresh water. So uh, equally we get frustrated when we can't easily get to the places that we want to go. Uh, you know, either get home or get to work or get to school or get to any of our leisure activities. This program is all about trying to fix that. It is a, a very, very big project. <coughs> Bob mentioned some of the numbers, but they are quite astronomical. You've got 51 kilometres of freshwater pipes, 
528 kilometres of wastewater pipes, 196 kilometres of stormwater pipes, 100 wastewater pump stations, 1,000 kilometres of roads, 45 footbridges, 18 road bridges. And all of those needing to be rebuilt or very substantially repaired. And a lot of that work has begun already. And I want to, at this point, uh, pay particular tribute to all the guys who got down on the trenches after the event, both September 4 and then more particularly on February 22nd. I see Mark Christensen there. Mark, uh, I don't think any of us can say often enough uh, just how grateful we are to you and your guys for the work that you did. Uh, Honour your team as well, fantastic. Uh, and I do hope you keep you know, relaying that to those guys because they were working literally in the muck for some days and it really did make such a difference to people very, very quickly. So today we're pleased to announce the plan of how all this happens. So while, as Bob said, there's been a lot of work done, uh, you know, tr getting things together, the fact is that our infrastructure, uh, the underground stuff remains fairly fragile and we do have to have a plan that we can articulate to people going forward, giving them a clear idea of when things are going to happen. So the plan essentially starts in the east and moves across to the west of the city. So taking the worst affected areas, sorting those out and then finishing in the areas that have least disruption and therefore the greatest capacity we think to put up with a bit of inconvenience in the meantime. Uh, it is true that we want to have um, the community involved and that we want them to uh, know exactly what the timelines are uh, and I'm sure that the communications that are planned uh, multimedia, uh, multi-personal, uh, will achieve that particular result. Just to, to get an idea of the sort of thing that we're talking about, just over here you can see in the background the old pump station that's just slumped into the ground across the road there, uh, very badly damaged. The new pump station being developed on this side here, that's a 12-month project, but in the end that single pump station will handle about a third of the city's waste. So it's an incredibly important project and it's the replication of that across the city that this plan is all about. So uh, I guess one of the things that's really uh, strange about this is that when it's all finished, the results of it won't be all that visible. But what we will end up with is incredibly strong infrastructure, infrastructure that's much more capable of resisting future seismic events, uh, and then an intellectual property about where the infrastructure is, uh, how it works, how it flows, etc., uh, that will be second to none in any city in the world, and all of that contributes to uh, the work that we want to see done to make Christchurch the very best small city in the world. So with that, uh, thank you very much for your attendance here today.